Our scripture reading from Jeremiah is titled, The New Covenant. The first covenant was given to the people through the Ten Commandments, but that covenant was broken by the people when they chose to make idols. But our God is a forgiving God, and in this passage, a new covenant is being made with the people both of Israel and Judah. Just to give you a little history, in Jeremiah's time, the Hebrew people were divided into two kingdoms. There was the northern and the southern. The northern kingdom was Israel and the southern was Judah. And Jeremiah was a prophet in Judah. It is helpful to remember that biblical prophet, prophets spoke God's word to the Hebrew people. It was their job to challenge kings and officials, and they called the people of God to account with God's law. Jeremiah was not a very popular prophet because he foretold the fall of Judah to the Babylonians. In the midst of natural disaster, he prophesied that God would create a new covenant with the people. However, this covenant was different because God not only fulfilled his part, but the people's as well. Let's listen again once to the word once again to the words in verse 33 to 34. But this is the covenant that I will make with the house of Israel after those days, says the Lord. I will put my law within them, and I will write it on their hearts. And I will be their God, and they shall be my people. No longer shall they teach one another or say to each other, Know the Lord, for they shall all know me. From the least of them to the greatest, says the Lord, for I will forgive their iniquity, and remember their sin no more. Do you hear the words of hope? God has moved from putting the covenant on tablets and expresses her love for us by marking us for life as God's beloved. God's love warrants marking us forever as her own. Despite the fact that the people broke the covenant, God forgives and once again shows how she loves us. We all know God. She has written her laws on our hearts, and we are forgiven, and God will remember our sin no more. How does that make you feel? The Seasons of the Spirit shares the following story. There's a lovely Hasidic story of a rabbi who always told his people that if they studied the Torah, it would put scripture on their hearts. One of them asked, why on our hearts and not in them? The rabbi answered, only God can put scripture inside. But reading sacred texts can put it on your hearts. And then when your hearts break, the holy words will fall inside. This Jeremiah passage to me speaks of a loving parent who has forgiven her wayward child. I don't know about you, but I was not the best daughter to my mother as a teenager. <laughs> but she forgave me, just as God forgives us our iniquities and our sins. I recently heard a pastor say that the God of the New Testament and the Old Testament is the same God. You often hear that the God of the Old Testament is very vengeful, but I don't think this passage says that at all. This passage shows us God is loving, forgiving, and marks us as her own. Just look around at the people in this congregation and think about all the work we do, both individually and collectively in God's name. God's word is clearly written on this congregation's heart. But how do we share it with others? One of my favorite Bible verses is Micah 6, verse 8. It reads, He has told you, O mortal, what is good, and what does the Lord require of you, but to do justice, and to love kindness, and to walk humbly with your God. God has written her law on our hearts. We are loved, forgiven, and are acceptable exactly as we are. We like to call ourselves Mr. People, living in the resurrection of Jesus. But as we are in Lent,
event, what about that in-between time? I think of Holy Saturday. When I was growing up, we never did anything on Holy Saturday. But then I came to Pilgrim and that changed, and I really love it. We have our Good Friday service that we end in quiet and darkness. We are mourning for the loss of Jesus. Then suddenly on Easter Sunday, he has risen from the dead. But what about that Holy Saturday? I love that we at here at Pilgrim have an Easter vigil. Recognition about the in-between. I love that hour alone with God, being able to sing, pray, or being in silence knowing that God is in this place. All the time waiting for the joy, hope, and new life of Easter Sunday when we will be reunited with our Savior. How do we have hope in this in-between time? When we are between birth and death, earth and heaven, joy and sorrow, we are in between a postmodern and what is to come. How does God's word written on our, your heart help you to deal with this in-between time? I know the wonderful thing about God's word being written on our hearts promises that God is always with us. But how do we share the hope of the scripture message when we are feeling sick and depressed? How can we tap into the constant presence of God? So many around us are hurting or sick or depressed. They need us to share our stories of the love and mercy that God has shown us. That is the beauty of the scripture. We can always find examples of love, mercy, and forgiveness that God has for us. In our second scripture reading, we have a prayer to God asking for mercy. It is titled, A Prayer for Cleansing and Pardon. It also focus on, focuses on the heart, but this passage talks about the sins that we feel we have committed or that may be weighing on our hearts. We all have regrets about things we have done or not done, said or left unsaid. Has there been a time when you made a decision based on your heart or rather your gut? Does the memory bring joy or pain? If it brings joy, that is great. But what if the memory brings pain and does not go away? Serving as a constant reminder of a transgression. That is one of the reasons I love this scripture passage. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love, according to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity and cleanse me from my sin. God loves us, and if God can forgive us, then we need to forgive ourselves. God's love and mercy are written on our hearts. God did not put her love on our hearts for no reason. She marked us as her beloved. And the passage continues. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you alone, have I sinned and done in what is evil in your sight, so that you are justified in your sentence and blameless when you pass judgment. We are the ones that weigh ourselves down with guilt and regret. What is the wisdom we want from God? At those times, it is hard to remember that we are the beloved of God, but we are, and we just need to ask forgiveness. God does not hold her love and mercy from us. In verse 6 we read, You desire truth in the inward being. Therefore, teach me wisdom in my secret heart. Purge me with hyssop, and I shall be clean. Wash me, and I shall be whiter than snow. Let me hear joy and gladness. Let the bones that you have crushed rejoice. Hide your face from my sins, and blot out all my iniquities. What is in your heart? Is it not God's word? How do you experience the word of God in your heart? Does it make you want to shout with joy or groan in sorrow? I can honestly say most days I want to shout with joy at the love and mercy that God has given to me throughout my life. 
In a little while, we are going to sing Great is Your Faithfulness. This is one of my favorite hymns, and the reason I chose it is how it makes my heart sing. The thing that really speaks to me about that song is it's not about our faithfulness to God, but God's faithfulness to us. No matter how many times we have broken the covenant, God makes a new one with us, once more inviting us back into relationship. Then we come to what I think is the most known verse of Psalm 51. Create in me a clean heart, O God, and put a new and right spirit within me. Do not cast me away from your presence, and do not take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation, and sustain in me a willing heart. In light of the passage from Jeremiah, this part of the psalm has a new meaning for me. I see it as a prayer to God to maintain those words in my heart. It serves as a reminder that God's already with me. We have already entered the covenant with God by being here this morning. Her words are written on your heart. Do you feel the love, mercy, and forgiveness that are there for you? I would leave you these words from our, palm, our Psalms passage. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and sustain in me a willing spirit. When you're sick, depressed, or downtrodden, remember that God is always with you. She has put her love on our hearts and marked us as her beloved. I invite you to go out this week and share this message of love with someone who needs to hear that they too are God's beloved. Because God's words of love are on their heart. Amen.